Before his MMA career, Daniel Cormier was a highly accomplished amateur wrestler. He won a world bronze medal in 2007 and finished second in the 2001 NCAA Division I Championship, coming fourth in the 2004 Olympic Games. While wrestling is known to be one of the best backgrounds for MMA, there's a lot that can go wrong in the transition to MMA. So how is Daniel Cormier's wrestling translated to MMA? Stay tuned and we'll find out. By now everyone knows that Cormier is constantly dipping his head to his right. Not only does this allow him to close distance while keeping his head offline, but it helps set up his wrestling. Extended hands block opponent's straight punches and force them to loop around the guard, while his long guard allows him to catch punches on his shoulders. Catching a punch on the shoulder with an extended hand gives Cormier an opening to wrap the head or collar tie and enter the clinch. His dip also acts as a built-in takedown threat, and he can pop back up to strike or shoot for a high crotch. While Cormier's head movement keeps him protected while entering, it also compromises his posture as he bends at the waist rather than folding at the hips. The ideal position for shot penetration is with your back straight and alignment between your head and hips, allowing you to maintain a constant drive without moving past your center of gravity. Cormier's posture issues mean that he relies on clean entries to hit his takedowns as he can struggle to recover his posture if the entry is messy. Hitting shots in open space is mostly a game of momentum. A successful shot usually involves knocking the opponent off balance with a penetration step and maintaining that forward motion while changing directions to bring them down. Cormier will enter in a crouch behind his lead hand to put opponents onto the back foot where they're not in position to drive off their lead foot and sprawl. The dip hides his level change into the shot and by pushing his opponent back he can drive through unimpeded. He'll also use long right hands or combinations to put his opponent on the back foot and hide his penetration. One of the easiest ways to score clean entries in MMA is by hitting reactive shots. Cormier can create a clear route onto the hips by timing his opponent's attempts to close distance and strike, ducking under their punches onto their hips. Cormier will also look to catch kicks and convert them into takedowns. High crotches are often finished by doubling off, but Cormier prefers to hold on to the leg as reaching for the double gives opponents opportunities to break the grip. As soon as Cormier secures the leg, he'll step outside and turn the corner, driving the opponent across his body with his head and legs. He does this in order to get a reaction, and when the opponent pushes back into him, he'll look to run the pipe, feeding the leg between his own while circling and pressuring downwards. If he can't finish by running the pipe, he'll keep changing directions to force his opponent off balance and catch them while they're hopping to stay up with a foot sweep or trip. By constantly switching directions, Cormier can keep his opponent off balance and use their own reactions against them. Cormier's most famous finish to the high crotch is the lift. He starts by threatening to run the pipe, dragging his opponent towards the trap leg while pressuring down. As they attempt to keep balance, he closes distance and turns the corner, 
ending up with his hips directly underneath him at a perpendicular angle to his opponent's hips. Cormier's hips are loaded to explode, so his opponent's hips are taken out of play. Cormier's skill at finding entries prevents a lot of early stage defense, and most of Cormier's opponents have poor late stage defense. The quality of wrestling at heavyweight, and to a lesser extent light heavyweight, is low, and most of Cormier's opponents attempt a weak cross face or push on the head, while their forearm is doing nothing. Let's look at some sound high crotch defense. There's two weak points to attack here, the connection between the head and hip, and the lock of the hands. There are a few different ways to address these vulnerabilities, but good defense should look to break the connection between the head and hip and eventually separate the hands. Trying to stay upright without fighting the grip is a little more than a stalling move, allowing the attacker time to manipulate your base. While most of his opponents aren't fantastic defensive wrestlers, DC has excellent chain wrestling. As long as he gets a clean entry, he can cycle between finishes and has counters ready when opponents offer sound defense. While single legs and high crotches are difficult to finish on the cage since the defender can lean against the cage for balance, Cormier will use the high crotch to pull opponents off the cage and finish with a trip. He'll often nudge them off the cage first in order to put himself in position to finish and then trap their leg between his own and the cage to trip them out. Cormier is also great at hitting takedowns in transition. A fighter is often most vulnerable just as he's about to stand or turn to escape a position, as often they're not prepared to immediately defend another attack. Cormier will time his shots or pick an ankle while opponents escape his control. Cormier uses control positions to funnel them into these attacks, using front headlocks or cradles to slow down their ascent, or letting them turn out of a rear body lock in order to drop in on the hips. Cormier also possesses an array of upper body throws and trips from the clinch, but they aren't go-to moves and he mostly employs them against overmatched or outsized opponents. Now let's take a look at some defended takedowns. Opponents have had most success either interrupting Cormier's shot with a frame early to kill his entry, or by passing the head across and forcing the single leg. Interrupting the shot with a cross face prevents Cormier from getting his head tight to the hip on the high crotch and forces him to bail or settle for an upper body clinch. By passing the head across and forcing the single, it becomes easier to fight the grip and attempt the limp leg out, while forcing Cormier to settle for a lower percentage finish to the single leg where he isn't as comfortable as his trademark high crotch.
While we don't see Cormier wrestling defensively often in MMA, he's fantastic at it. He has great hips and a heavy sprawl. He sprawls at an angle, taking his hips out of the way of his opponent's drive, and immediately starts working for a go-behind or a front headlock once on top. The biggest issue with Cormier's wrestling is that he can't sustain it for long periods of time against elite fighters. Many of his entries and finishes, as well as his striking style, are very high intensity, and it takes a lot of energy for him to attempt takedowns consistently. Against his highest class of opposition, he tends to rely on his wrestling to steal a round or two and make his striking more effective through its implied presence. But he hasn't shown the cardio to wrestle to a late victory on an opponent who makes him work for his takedowns. How do you think Daniel Cormier's wrestling will fare in his rematch with Stipe Miocic? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.